instructor Steve Bishop out here at Rio Salado Golf Course. And today's lesson is going to be about the backswing pivot. Uh, and a lot of attention has been given to this recently because of uh, some threads on the golf forums that I frequent about Michelle Wee and her work with David Ledbetter. Uh, and basically the argument is, is what we call uh, the A-frame or tripod look, where the head basically stays stationary, and you can see it's directly over, and be, um, excuse me, directly between my feet, all right? And this is supposed to be a stabilizing thing so that you keep your weight and you, you keep your, your, your center, your swing center, directly between your feet the whole time. And that's kind of starting to come more and more uh, and a, a concept that you'll find among a lot of golf instructors now. We're trying to keep that head stable. Uh, and this, this type of theory has come and gone. I've seen head stable, you know, uh, folklore happen back and forth all the time. Now, I don't like the head still or tripod or A-frame type of, of look because, in all honesty, what it causes is actually what you call a reverse pivot. The head is not the central point of the golf swing. The central point of the golf swing is actually the part of your spine directly between your shoulders. That is right between your shoulders. It's not on my back. It's actually in my spine. So it's slightly in front of, of it's, it's slightly in front of my back, but it's right in between my shoulder blades. Okay. Now, since as you're looking at me here, obviously I have a certain amount of mass that is in front of my spine, and I have part of my stomach. I have my my chest muscles, my arms, which all weigh quite a bit of, 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 of pounds, and they're all in front of my spine. So when we're turning our back, to make our back swing, you'll see that in fact the mass of my body, even though it's, it's just turning around my spine, the mass of my body is now on my back foot. So when we have a weight shift that goes to our back foot, it's really not so much that we're swaying or we're moving to our back foot, it's really more that our mass is turning back and going over our, our back. Now I tend to make my shift to my back foot very early in my golf swing. I tend to set up with a little bit more weight loaded up on my right foot right at the setup of the golf swing, I'd say about 60-40. And what that really helps me do is so that I, it helps me so that I don't have to actually make any sort of weight shift and try to time or, or get a, a tempo of my weight shift. All I have to simply do is just turn my, my shoulders back around my spine and my arms will, and my, my, the front of my body will place my weight over my back foot. I'm not actually having to, again, move off of the ball to create that. The other thing is, is that in setup, we have what we call this, the axis tilt, where we have, basically, if you were to look at my spine from the front, which is what I'm going to use this golf club for to represent, I have a slight tilt so that my spine is actually angled backwards a little bit. My hips are forward, but my head and my shoulders are back a little bit behind the ball. And what that does is that allows for your right shoulder on the forward swing to move properly down plane. But we, we'll have to get into that on another, uh, on another video. But for right now, I just want you to understand that for the pivot itself, going back, it is important that we have this slight axis tilt. We don't want it to be way back here. We don't want it to be dead center over the top. We actually want a little bit. Now, for those of you that like a tripod idea, that can't work. You can't have any sort of axis tilt for that because you have to try to keep your spine straight up and down in order to keep your head right where it's at, right? And that actually creates what you call a reverse pivot because now if I, cre if I keep my head perfectly still, you can see how I'm leaning. Doesn't it look like I'm leaning towards my target, right? And now, because I'm leaning towards my target, I will have a hard time actually moving and bumping my hips forward to generate any sort of speed. What ends up happening is I have to turn, I have to put my head back the other direction during the swing in order to get some good power behind it. The promoters of the A-frame or tripod now have a problem with that steady head because it does create a bit of a reverse pivot. And oftentimes you'll see that the right leg will straighten up in order to help facilitate that, that, that perfectly straight head. Now, whether you straighten it out or not, 
is not really a concern to me, but it is a concern to me if you're straightening it out and creating a reverse pivot, again, where I'm starting to lean to go forward. Again, the idea is to get your weight on your back foot. If your head is directly centered and you are trying to keep your spine perfectly straight, what you're going to actually find out is that your weight is still about 50-50. I can actually feel a little bit more weight on my front foot when I'm in this position here. Okay? And this is going to be a problem for anybody that's trying to create that tripod look. Because now you don't have any way to move your weight forward. And whenever we're dealing with a swing where this, and we have a swing center, the swing center actually moves just slightly from back to forward, just a little tiny, tiny bit. That's what helps to generate the speed from the center all the way out to the club head, okay? Because the swing center, just like if I'm moving a pendulum, I do have to, with a little bit of effort, I am, you can see, I kind of move my hand back and forth a little bit. That's how I create the motion. So here's where it becomes really evident that there's a problem with the tripod. On the forward swing, if I've already got my weight kind of shifted forward, I can't move to go forward to hit the ball. I actually have to do a reversal of that. I have to, instead of being on the front foot, instead of being leaning forward, I have to eventually lean back. Well, that causes a problem because now my right shoulder since I'm trying to maintain my, my, my spine and I can't lean back here, in order for me to stay with my head perfectly centered and keeping my spine perfectly straight, I cannot sustain that lag and I can't drop my right shoulder down into the slot. And looking at it from the side here, I'll show you why. The forward bump of the hips from the top of the backswing here, the forward bump helps to actually drop that right shoulder down plane a little bit. As the hips bump, so goes the shoulder, right? You can see that because my arms are also coming along with it. Drops that right shoulder in. Well, what happens is with the reverse pivot is that you can see my shoulder, my right shoulder is way up higher. Now with that way up high right shoulder, I have to drop it back in to, to get it back on plane, which means again, I to see that, I have this combined with that motion. So now my weight shift has gone from my forward foot to my back foot in the middle of the swing. And that's not very helpful. So a proper backswing pivot is going to actually have your head and your shoulders back over the inside of your back foot. And you're going to see that your left hip and, and your, your, your back is actually going to point a line almost straight down your front foot. It won't be perfectly straight. Some people kick in their knee a little bit more. Some people leave it out here to really create that straight. Okay? But really you're going to see kind of a lean on the back foot where as the hip is moved out still in front and the shoulders and the head are actually back. Now from the back view you're going to see that what this does is that it allows for that right shoulder to be set already it, uh, in a much better position for when the, those hips bump to go forward, it's a small move to go back forward and drop that right shoulder down. Whereas with that reverse pivot look, okay, with that reverse pivot look, you can see I'm much higher, and now I have to make a big shift of my body in order to get that right shoulder to go down plane. So having that much more motion to your swing makes it much more difficult to time and keep consistent. So that's why it's so important to learn that you actually want to keep this axis tilt. Again, you can see my spine. If I were to put this club down my spine, you can see that my spine is actually aimed right out about where my foot is. And that's good. That's where we want it to be. Okay? So that when I make that bump forward, again, I'm going to keep this axis tilt right here. Right? I'm going to keep this axis tilt, boom, okay, and that allows for that right shoulder. You see how it gets lower than the left? That's what's important, and it needs to stay low all the way through the swing, all the way through to the finish. Most of the amateurs I find have this right shoulder move out, and a lot of that has to do with this reverse pivot, because if I have that reverse pivot, now look at I'm going to throw this out. And again, if you look at the top, if I throw it out, okay, here's the reverse pivot. 
and I throw out the shoulder, look at how outside to in I have to go to hit the ball. Again, the way to properly execute a good back swing pivot is to have, I like to say, a little bit of weight back on my right foot by just simply tilting my, my upper body just back slightly. So that my head is actually a little bit more towards my right foot. Ball position is gonna be almost exactly opposite of, of where my head is gonna be. So now that I have my setup here, I'm just simply going to rotate my shoulders around my spine and then put my arms up to my, uh, put the club over my shoulder. And that's my backswing. That's all that I need in order to accomplish my backswing. Notice that my hips are still out in front and my shoulders are now back behind the ball squarely. You can, you can really see that I have a good deal of distance. Here's my left shoulder. That's a good deal distance. And again, you can see that's, that's right on the inside of my right foot. That's way back behind the ball. And that allows for me to develop some, some motion and movement forward so that I can have leverage moving forward into the ball rather than trying to be here because there's no leverage here. I can't move forward to get to the ball. I'm gonna lean into it. I think we all know that instinctively with the reverse pivot. Instead, we wanna make sure that our hands are getting in front of the ball, but our, our upper bodies are actually staying slightly back. That's the proper way to be at impact. We don't wanna, we don't wanna be perfectly square here. We don't wanna be uh, trying to, to flip our hands at it this way. Okay? And a lot of times if you have that reverse pivot, that's the only way you can get back to that ball square. And you'll see it all the time. You'll see people doing this in order to square it up. But you want the hands in front. So the only way you can get your hands in front is and still be able to make good solid contact is if your upper body is in back. Otherwise, you're going to leave it dead outright. You see, if, I, if I'm here at impact, you can see that club face is wide open. I can't hit the ball straight with a wide open club face. But if you have a reverse pivot, that's exactly what you're going to do. So you have to be behind it so that your hands can get forward of the ball and it'll square up the club face. You have time to square up that club face. And in fact, the centrifugal force and, and having a neutral grip will cause that club face to square up all by itself. So just ha all you have to do then is make sure that you have a proper pivot on your backswing and you try to make sure your hands get in front of the ball, okay, not through any sort of held off action, but simply by making sure that they get in front of the ball, kind of uh, 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 a backhanded karate chop towards the ball here, right? We have kind of a backhanded of our left goes into it, or you can try to skip a rock with your right arm. They're both the same motion, so that our hands get in front, the right arm extends all the way through, and that extension is what's going to square up the club face, so long as you maintain your tilt. If you don't maintain your tilt, then you're gonna leave that club face wide open. I'll execute a proper axis tilt and a proper backswing pivot for you. I hope this pivot video has been helpful for you. Uh, I hope that you find some good things about it that you can uh, put into your own game. It's a little bit more specific uh, than, my, than my normal videos are, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So feel free to go ahead and email me those uh, at any time, or you can also uh, obviously see me on some of the web forums that I subscribe to. Um, I actually have my own forum if you want to go ahead and join me. That's at golfinstruction.biz, uh, and I, I hope to see you there.